All right, welcome back to physical geology. And again, we're working on the last part of the hydrologic cycle in Fluvial Systems Lab. And this part deals with the meandering evolution of the Rio Grande and also on the headward erosion of Niagara Falls. The first part on the Rio Grande, we're going to look at meander cut banks and point bars. And here they're labeled A through G. And if we look at the map, we'll see that looking at the river at two different intervals of time. One, 1936, which is the red outline here with the river, how the river looked like in 1936. And then the, what the river looked like in 1992. And then these different letters are the different cut banks that we'll be looking at. So studying these, these two data sets from 1936 and 1992, we want to look at how the river has changed course over time and how one location may have, because, because the Rio Grande is an international border between Mexico and the United States, some points may have been in the U.S. in 1936 and now part of Mexico in 1992. So when we look at, uh, uh, at points H and I, uh, we can see what's going on in terms of where they were in 36 and in 1992. So for example, point H, so in 1936, the red outline, you would see that point H was in Mexico during that time. So you would label Mexico for that first question. But then you can see that between 1936 and 1992, there was a meander cutoff. And this has become an oxbow lake. Now point H would be part of the USA. So that's kind of the idea of what you want to go through when you're, going, when you're looking at this here. So sheet we would label Mexico for the first one, U.S. for the second one, and then explain a process that probably caused location H and I to change. Uh, remember that's going to be the the cutoff. And so again just work your work through this problem just like I, I did here. There's some more questions regarding the different locations. And then this next part is going to deal with migration between the 36 and 1992 and to do this what I recommend you do for example on this A through G what you want to do is measure the distance of any of these so for example location A in 1936 it was here but in 1992 it was here so using the bar scale down here you'll see that that distance roughly corresponds to about maybe 800 meters 900 meters here so it, yeah, this is 200. So this is, let's say this distance here. So we'll say it's, and it was over a time interval of, of 56 years, right? Cause that's a time between, if I can get this mouse to work. Yeah, 56 years here. So our math would be here. So the, the, the rate would be equal to the distance over the time, right? So we've gone, uh, let's say it's 800 meters over those 56 years. And so when we do the math there, it's 14.3, 14.3. And, and you want it to be, it'll be meters per year, something like that. So anyhow, uh, that's the way I want you to work, work that out in you know, So that's a good example for that one. And then for Niagara Falls, you're gonna do a very similar problem, some, some rate distance over time. But in this case, um, here what they're asking us, we're gonna, trying to calculate the average rate. So again, remember a, a rate problem is always going to be some distance o over the time, something like that. And uh, so in this case, you're going to be measuring for Niagara Falls, the distance between this escarpment all the way back to the current position of the falls. If you follow the directions here, let's see what it says here. Um, so you'll have to measure that distance and then the time would be 11,000 years. So measure the distance between the escarpment and the current position of the falls. And then you're going to divide that distance by 11,000 years. So in that case, for the Niagara Falls, there is a scale here. And so in this case, you're going to need to use a string or shoelace or something to measure this curvy path and then stretch out that string or shoelace along this distance, figure out how many kilometers uh, between um, the escarpment and the current position of the falls. And then you're going to divide that by the 11,000 years. And once you do that, uh, you'll get an idea of, um, of the rate. You'll get the rate for the problem. 
But there's a tricky part here. So let's look at question number two. And so you got to name some factors that could cause falls. Yeah, so for example, more discharge, more water, softer rock. Uh, so other things like that you might want to think about. Uh, how can you re make the, the rate go slower? Again, think about some factors there. And so Niagara Falls is about 35 kilometers north of Lake Erie. So here we see that um, here's Lake Erie down here. Lake Ontario is up over here. And so the falls are, are eroding back toward Lake Erie. It's called headward erosion. And so we want to figure out when will it reach, when would this, these falls reach Lake Erie, uh, where, where now it would become a straight connection between Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. And so to do that, you, you want to, well, it's telling us that it's 35 kilometers here. So for this problem, what we want to do is, is we want to figure out the time, right? So the time is going to be equal to the distance divided by the rate in this case. And we know that our rate is, uh, we had it up here, right? It was, oh, you haven't calculated, so you have to calculate that rate. So, so in this case, you'll, you'll have the 35 kilometers and you're gonna divide that by, and make sure your rate is in kilometers per year, kilometers per year. So I guess you'll have to, when you answer this problem here, you're gonna figure out the rate in kilometers. Well, here they say centimeters per year, but maybe we should just focus on kilometers per year because you're going to need those kilometers when you figure out the uh, for the time of how long it's going to take before the falls eventually reach uh, Lake Lake uh, Erie right so work on that uh, this is pretty straightforward you should be able to understand what's going on there